Five years ago, Donna moved to Philadelphia from the Midwest. She has two daughters, is an actor, director, playwright, and has had a chance to have her plays produced, her poetry performed. She achieved two masters in theater and playwriting, and a few years ago, her passion for poetry led her to the creative writing program at Rosemont College. She studied poetry with an amazing group of writers, a faculty she was inspired by, and now as an MFA, and now has an MFA in creative writing. She's been published in Philadelphia Poets uh, by the great Rosemary Capello, and is submitting her manuscript and poems to all kinds of places hoping for great fame, which I'm sure she will achieve. <laughs> Please welcome Donna Keegan. The first one's called Witch. A witch from the house down the block drew on hot flames, a power unheard of before, was a threat at the local grocery store. After her head fell from their rooftop, the roof of their home, she saw more clearly, thought about sight and sound. Fragmented moonlight struck her gaze far below on the ground as she stood headless in the night. Less head, more her, she thought, till it floated up, her head floated up, her gaze curtained by black, no longer fragmented, no longer limitless, she thought, in the dark alone. I should warn the world about the black curtain, about limitless seeing, dark and alone. Instead, she asked her husband to fix the faucet in the kitchen. It was dripping again from pipe, pipes loosed with her, his wrench when he soldered his connections twisted and broken, said steel shifted under the sink. He <coughs> smiled, said, not our sink. So she used a plastic bu bucket to catch the drips, wondered why the sink dripped like tin rain, why steel shifted, why children are sold, why vaginas are sewn closed, not our country, he said. Why vaginas are sewn and unsewn, why women are sold for sex, why babies are sold. She knew it was hard to calm a baby with colic, to fix faucets that drip like tin rain, plunking from pipes, wrenched broken. The witch said again, we need a plumber. Why, asked her husband, to find the babies, the vaginas, to catch them in the bucket. Thus spoke the witch from the edge of the ledge. This one is called Beauty is Only Skin Deep. The advertisement promised a certain amount of beauty, quantifiable in fact, so she was disappointed that when she glanced back in the mirror, she was still large, still fat, could see her own self still standing in jeans. Her white tennis shoes aged pale, her t-shirt bunched under her large breasts, which seemed larger for some reason. Her jeans still tight around her thighs. If the lines, the crinkles of her eyes were smooth slightly, age reduced by years like they had promised, she hardly noticed because she was still there. This is called the vegetarian. <clears throat> it was 4.30 in the afternoon, cardboard stuck to its side, its frozen, solid, rectangular gray mass floated, defrosting in her sink and tepid water. Had been in urge for the assigned several minutes per side. She flipped it tenuously leaned in close, peered at the fish body, the fillet of white fish, innocuous, colorless, ineffectual, no doubt like itself, she thought, bland. Unlike life before, when its fins shifted while swimming, guided its path, you know, she wasn't a fish person, but could understand. She drifted through life herself without fins. Again, flipped the thawed body, stuck in cardboard, super fresh as sail on fish from freezer to freezer, not much of a life unless you liked swimming before, before it was caught by some corporate fishing magnet, some ship. She didn't like swimming or fishing for that matter, and she rinsed the filet, wrapped it tight in a towel, stepped out the kitchen door to her garden, grabbed a trowel, and buried a deep whispering, sorry, sorry, to her dear white fish. Mm. A little girl, about seven, waited for a bus with her mother, her tiny feet in pink plastic shoes, wiggled ankles tilted together, jerked playful as she balanced on a nut fallen from an oak, hid beneath her feet. She suspended, unaware that I marveled at her trick, that she hovered over pavement on an acorn in air. The alarm went off before night, which fell like a knife slicing through warm sourdough bread or fruitcake on Christmas. Not the same exactly, to be, no crust to be sure, but thick at the same time, chewy, thick. <laughs> the alarm went off as we escaped the bank vault, got caught, but to be fair, it wasn't my fault. True, I had a few bills, but I'd suggested picking up less after all, yet my friend, we had really just met very recently, in fact, at the neighborhood bar. I don't drink normally, but went for a beer, cerveza with wine, though I'm not a beer drinker except that night because I'd been evicted or threatened. 
with eviction and why I went to the bar. Why the woman, this sort of friend I just met at the bar, suggested robbing the bank. And I said, a few dollars is all I need. She said, fine, but during the robbery, she wanted more, I guess. Can't trust anyone anymore nowadays. And she, well, she took more than I thought we should. And yeah, it was my fault we got caught because I couldn't tie the bag tight enough. The spring was afraid. It was a whole bag. And we planned to escape early evening as night fell. But by the time I'd finished tying up the bag, night had fallen. <laughs> it fell like a warm knife through sourdough bread. Or like Christmas fruitcake, 2A, I guess. So let's just say it was dark and we got lost and they caught us, so it's my fault we're in jail. My fault, not some similar metaphor about night falling, but it was her who made us fall. <laughs> <laughs>